Knowing a fake from the real thing is a useful skill. I was in Malaysia last year and it was really amazing just how cheap some things were. Rolex watches, Louis Vuitton bags, designer clothing, they were an absolute bargain. And I had more than enough money to buy a whole load of them, the exchange rate was terrific, and to bring them back with me to Australia and sell them for a massive profit, which would then go to supporting more college and the ministry training strategy, of course. But I didn't do that because I just knew that if you pay peanuts, you're going to get monkeys. And if it seems too good to be true, it usually is. And having grown up as a migrant kid with family in Asia, I knew that fakes and forgeries are just part of life there. But even if you're not a migrant kid, all you have to do is look a bit closer, don't you, at the quality, the spelling, and the material being used to know that the Rolex you were holding was probably a fake, given that it was made out of plastic and couldn't tell the time. Most of us can tell what's real from what's fake. Because when we compare what's real uh, to what's fake, they're just not the same. And it's much the same when it comes to being a Christian. You can tell what's real from what's fake by holding it up to the real thing. And in particular, holding up how a Christian treats others and loves others against the way God has loved them. And that's what we're going to be looking at from the Bible today. Today, we're looking at what authentic, real, genuine Christian living looks like and how you can tell what's real from what's fake. And for those of you who have been following along in this series, let me remind you of what we've seen so far. So back at the beginning, uh, we've been looking at 1 John chapter 4. Uh, John told us that God is love and that love is defined by God and the relationships within the Trinity. As Father, Son and Spirit love one another by putting each other before themselves. Then we saw that the God who is love loves us as well. And that even though we didn't love God, he loved us and showed us his love through the death of his son, Jesus, who died on the cross as an atoning sacrifice for our sins so he could be forgiven, set free and made right with God. And now, having received that love and having become a Christian, the question for us then is, well, what does that mean for the way that we live? How should receiving God's love shape the way we treat others in a way that people can tell that we're the real deal? That's what we're going to have a look at. And can you please open your Bibles to 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20? And let's have a look at what John has to say. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 20. And here in this verse, John says, Whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. John says that the first thing to look for when it comes to whether someone is living an authentic Christian life is whether they love their brothers and sisters in Christ. He says that it's their love for their fellow Christians that will show that they're real. And when you step back to think about it, it kind of makes sense, doesn't it? Because what happens when you become a Christian? When you embrace God's love and place your trust in Jesus. Not only are you forgiven and able to look forward to heaven, but you're also given the extraordinary, wonderful privilege of being adopted into God's family. That's what it says in 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. John says, See what great love the Father has lavished on us, that we, of all people, should be called children of God. When we trust in Jesus, we become God's children. We've God as our Father and our fellow Christians as brothers and sisters. When we trust in Jesus, we become family. And what that means is, if you say you're a Christian, and say you love God, and that God is your Father and you was one of his children, then 
not loving your brothers and sisters in Christ is not loving your family, which doesn't make sense. Uh, John puts this another way in 1 John chapter 5, verse 1. And here he says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. And what John is saying here is that you can't love God the Father without loving his children, that loving God the Father and his children go hand in hand. In fact, if we go back to our verse, come back with me to verse 20, John puts it even more strongly. 1 John chapter 4, verse 20, here he says, if you claim to love God but don't love your brothers and sisters in Christ, then what you're actually doing is lying. You are lying. And the reason he gives is really quite logical. Uh, come back and have a look at verse 20 with me to see if you can follow uh, John's line of argument here. Uh, John says, if you can't love your brother and sister who you have seen, who are right there in front of you, well, then how can you claim to love God who cannot be seen? The argument goes a bit like this. Uh, just, just imagine for a moment. So let's say I come up to you one day and despite all appearances, I tell you that I'm a bit of a thrill seeker, that I'm an adrenaline junkie, and that the one thing I wanted to do more than anything else was to climb up to the top of the Sydney Harbour Bridge and bungee jump off the side. Sounds great, doesn't it? Hands up who wants to come with me. It sounds really, really exciting. Let's say then I'm over your place one day and you've got high ceilings and a light globe goes out, so you need someone to climb a ladder to change the light globe. And I'm not doing anything particular, so you say, Gary, can you please go change the light globe? And then I tell you that I can't because I'm scared of heights. Now, will you still believe me when it comes to me being a thrill seeker and wanting to climb to the top of the Harbour Bridge to jump off the side? I mean, you'd have to have second thoughts, wouldn't you, given what you've seen? Because if I won't climb a ladder, which is right there in front of me, then why should you believe me when I say that I want to jump off a bridge that you cannot see? You see how that works? That's what John is saying here in our passage. In a way, what he's saying is you can say that you're a Christian and you can say that you really love God. But because we can't see God, we can't see your love for him directly. In fact, we can only see your love for God through your love for his children, who we can see and are right there in front of us. That's John's argument here in 1 John chapter 4, verse 20. He's saying that the key way to tell a real Christian from a fake is through the love that they have for their fellow Christians. And I've seen a lot of that going on recently, uh, given everything we've been going through. Can I just say how encouraging it's been to see the way God's people have been loving each other during this pandemic, it's been really encouraging. I've seen so many people reach out to each other, even those they don't really know that well. I've seen so many people praying for one another, ringing each other, sending care packages, texts, emails, cards, just checking that people are okay. It's really been wonderful to see how the people in our churches have been loving each other. And it is a powerful demonstration of the difference that knowing Jesus can make. And it is powerful because while loving each other might seem like the most natural thing in the world, it actually isn't. And I'm going to let you in on a bit of a secret. And some of you might be shocked by what I'm about to say. I've been a Christian for years. Uh, in my capacity as a Christian minister, I've cared for hundreds of people. And now I have the great privilege of being a bishop. But there are times when I find Christian people just hard to love. Now, are you surprised by that? Have you ever felt that way yourself? Have you ever asked God, oh, why do you say that person? Do I really have to love them as well? I'm sure you have. I'm sure we all have at some time or another. I'm sure we've all experienced times when we found Christian people really hard to love. And there are at least a couple of reasons for why that's the case. Firstly, love can be hard because just like a real family, we don't get to choose who ends up belonging to it. Because a church isn't 
gathered according to how one looks or common interests or on the basis of personality. In fact, more often than not, the only thing we share in common is our need for Jesus as sinful people. And that leads to the second thing that can make it hard to love one another. And that's the fact that we're sinful people. We're all sinners. None of us are perfect. And what does sin do to relationships? Well, if we define sin as placing ourselves before God, if we define sin as taking the place of God in our own lives, well, when I do that and you do that, then what do you think it'll be like when we come together? It'll be like a couple of young children having the time of their life, enjoying each other's company, until there's a toy that both of them want, and then it's, that's mine, no, that's mine, and things get ugly. Sin damages relationships and makes love hard. And what's true for everyone is true for Christians as well. Sin has an impact on relationships in the Christian community. And what that means is that in any church or Christian community, there might be people who've sinned against us or we've sinned against. People who've wronged us or misunderstood us, who've lied about us, gossiped, who've excluded us, looked down on us. Sins damage relationships there as well. And as a result, our natural inclination is to want nothing to do with these people. Our natural inclination is to want to cut them off. And can I just say for a moment, there may be situations where we actually need to do this for our own personal safety or the sake of our loved ones. And if that is you, please reach out to someone. Reach out to this church because they're willing to listen and they'd love to help. But outside of those situations, what John is saying is this. He's saying if we love God and that other person loves God and through trusting in Jesus, we're both God's children and belong to God's family, then what God wants is for us to love one another, showing each other the love that he has shown us. And this is where our understanding of love that comes from who God is can really help us when we find love hard. Because how does the Bible call us to love one another? The Bible calls us to love one another in the way that Jesus has loved us. And how has Jesus loved us? 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us. And as a result, what does this mean in term, uh, for uh, loving our fellow Christians? John goes on to tell us that as a result of the love of Jesus, we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers and sisters. And this brings us back to our definition of love that comes from the fact that God is love, that love is putting others before yourself and the actions and emotions that go with doing that. That's what the example of Jesus is calling us to do. It's calling us to love our brothers and sisters by placing them before ourselves and serving them and seeking what's in their best interest, even when it's costly, even when it's hard. And understanding love in this fashion through the lens of Jesus really helps us to love in at least three ways. Firstly, it helps us to love those we find difficult to love. Because the love that we're called to doesn't depend on how we feel. The love that we're called to is all about sacrifice and service. Now, what that means is that we can be totally different to that person. We can have little in common with our brother and sister, and we can still love them. We can still place their needs before our own. We can still seek to love them in the way Jesus loved us, because our love for them doesn't depend on our feelings. Let me ask you, is there someone at church at the moment you find difficult to love? And how could you love them the way that Jesus has loved you? Because that's what God is calling you to do. Secondly, understanding love in this fashion also helps us to know what isn't love. So, for example, love doesn't mean doing whatever someone asks you to do. Because it's not always loving to say yes to somebody. And that's especially the case if that person is saying uh, things like, if you loved me, you'd lend me money. If you loved me, you'd lie for me. If you loved me, you'd let me copy your assignment. If you loved me, 
you'd like my post. If you loved me, you'd send me nude photos. If you loved me, you'd sleep with me. That's not love. It's more like manipulation. Love doesn't mean doing whatever one asks of you. Because if love means acting in a way that is best for that person, then it's not actually loving to help them to sin. And let me ask you another question at this point. Is there someone you need to say no to? Someone you need to say no to in order to love them. Thirdly, just as love means saying no sometimes, it can also mean saying you're wrong as well. Because loving someone doesn't mean turning a blind eye to their sin or condoning their behaviour or embracing their lifestyle. And while we are called to love our brothers and sisters in Christ, no matter who they are or what they have done, that's not the same as saying that we have to approve of everything they do. That love never means uh, challenging someone or saying they're wrong. Because done, with the right, uh, done in the right way, with the right motivation, saying you're wrong or saying what you're doing is unwise or saying that this will damage your relationship with God is actually one of the most loving things you can do for a brother or sister in Christ. Because even though it can be uncomfortable to do that and the person you're speaking to may not like it, it's as we love our brothers and sisters in Christ with the same type of love that Jesus has shown us that places one's relationship with God above everything else that will actually love that person in a way that is real, not fake, and show ourselves to be real and authentic children of God. Because you can't really tell a Christian by the cross around their neck, their lack of swearing, or their attendance at church. But you can tell who's real from who's fake by their love as they serve and their love as they sacrifice for their brothers and sisters. Jesus says this in John chapter 13, verse 35. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And here's the challenge for us as we finish. Do you think everyone will know that you're a disciple of Jesus? Can they tell from the love that you have? For your brothers and sisters, your fellow Christians, will they think that you're real or you're fake when they hold up your love next to God's love for us in Jesus?